Hi guys, I am Luan Skaggs and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be making molds so that we could make lots of onlays inexpensively. And if you guys would like to see how we made these molds, then come with me and let's get started. To get started, these are just some of the pieces I'm going to be molding. I really love these pieces and I'm going to show you how I prepare them to be molded. I also got these and I got all three sizes because there are so much more possibilities we could make when we have all three sizes. Now when we are buying our onlays, we want to try and get onlays that has both the left and the right sides and at least if we are getting one onlay, we want to make sure that the left and the right side is the same. So that way we could use it continuously or we could make it in a lot of different designs and that would give us the most usage out of the pieces. That's just something that you could look for when you're thinking about buying onlays. Now one of the pieces I was going to mold broke and if this ever happened to you I just wanted to show you how I fixed it. I'm going to be using Gorilla Wood Glue to hold it together. And to hold the two pieces together while they dry I took a piece of paper and used hot glue and stuck the two pieces of wood onto the paper. This will hold it together until it's dry. Now you could take a brush and clean up any extra glue. Then I placed some weights on the top of it to help keep it down and make sure that the two pieces bond together. Now we'll let it dry and tear off the paper in the back once we're finished. Now we'll varnish them. We want to have a barrier between the wood and the silicone. Now I tried this before using just the raw wood and the silicone just stuck to the wood and when you tried to get it up it just teared and made a big mess. So we definitely need a protective layer between the wood and the silicone. Now I'm using this Minwax water base varnish and this I bought for jewellery. Now it has a yellow tint to it and that doesn't work that well for jewellery but for these wood pieces it is fine. Now I poured some of it out in a container to make it easier to use. If you want to get something to protect your surface, I just grabbed this empty cereal box and I'll be using this to protect the surface and also to make the molds. Now we'll varnish the pieces. Now we'll let the piece dry and then we'll come back. Now once your onlay is dried, all I did was took some hot glue and glued it onto the cereal box. Now I also cut some strips of the cereal box and I cut them about an inch wide. Now we'll take our strips and glue it around our onlays. We are going to be gluing about a quarter inch all the way around the onlays. We don't want to have too much of a gap because we don't want to use too much of the silicone. The silicone isn't very cheap so we want to save as much as possible. So we'll try to go around the shape and make sure that we get it as close as possible. So we want to have a nice distance but not too much. A quarter inch should do just fine. So we'll turn the shiny side of the cardboard in the inside because when it's dry it would be able to release from the mold. And before we glue the cardboard we'll bend it into the shape of our piece and then glue it in place. That just makes it a lot easier to glue the cardboard. Now we'll put the glue on the outside of the strips and we'll do this all the way around the piece. And once we get to the end, we'll cut off whatever piece of cardboard remaining and glue the two pieces together. Once we're done gluing up our cardboard, we're ready to pour in our silicone. Now guys, this is just some of the molds that I'll be making. Sorry that this footage came out so blurry, I didn't realize that the camera wasn't focusing. But I hope you could see it well enough. Beside the other onlays, this is one of the pieces that I really like. And I want to mold this as well. I picked this up from Lowe's and it's a very long strip. You can't really cut it with a saw or anything like that if we want it to come back seamlessly. The best way I found of doing it is using this X-Acto knife that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and just cutting between the lines. Then we'll pry it apart a little bit so it could help bend and break and then continue cutting. We'll continue doing this until we cut the piece. And be very careful when you're doing this. You don't want to cut yourself. Once we cut the piece, we could shave off any rough edges. Now you want to mark the ends so you know which pieces goes together. I'm marking one and one on both ends and then I'll be marking two and two on the other ends and so forth and so forth until we get to all the pieces. This will just make us know which ones goes with which ones when we are going to line up our pieces. 
Now we could sand off anything that we don't want in our finish mold. I don't really have anything on hand to sand with, so I cut off the back piece of this sponge and I'm going to use this to try to see if I could sand off anything that I don't want on the final piece of the mold. Now that we have all our pieces cut and we have them all numbered, we'll mold these pieces as well. We'll take our pieces and we'll glue them onto the cardboard with enough space in between each one. And when we're gluing on the pieces, we want to put the corresponding numbers next to each other. So when we're making up the pieces, we know that the two closest pieces goes together. Once we finish gluing on our pieces, we'll glue a strip around it like we did for the other mold and then we'll come back. Once I was finished gluing on the strip, this is what I had. We want to bring the strip as close to the pieces as we can so we don't waste silicone. To make the mold, this is the silicone that I'll be using. I've been using this for a long time so if you guys want to use the same silicone that I'm using, the link for this would be listed in the description box. One of the reasons I like the silicone is because it's a one-to-one and that's very easy to calculate. So I'll be pouring the two bottles out and mixing them together because I'll be making a lot of molds today. Before pouring them out, we want to mix the contents in the bottle so it's nice and smooth. Now you'll pour equal parts of the both products into one container and mix it well. At the end, we want to have one color. We want to scrape the sides, we want to scrape the bottom, we want to scrape all over. We want to make sure that it's completely mixed together. Now we'll pour the silicone into the mold. We want to pour in one spot and have the silicone run onto the pieces so air bubbles wouldn't get trapped in the pieces. Now as the silicone move along, because this is such a big piece, you could move behind the silicone but make sure and have the silicone going in front and you behind so that you don't trap air bubbles between the pieces. Guys I'm sorry that my container is so big and it might be blocking the camera so guys just pour in your silicone and then we'll come back. So I used one box and I could still see the pieces. So I'm going to mix up some more and pour it over the top. And we'll do the same for all of our other molds. We'll pour in the silicone just like we did for the bigger mold. Now I'm just tilting it back and forward just to make sure that the silicone goes into all the corners. Now that it's leveled, we'll leave it for a few hours. It normally sets up between 4 and 6 hours. So we leave it for a while and then we'll come back. Once our mold is set, we could peel off the cardboard. This is how easy it is to peel off the cardboard because we use the shiny side of the cardboard. When you peel off your mold, most likely there'll be silicone that bleed under the piece. So all we'll do is use an X-Acto knife and we'll pull the mold apart a little bit so that we could see where to cut so we could cut off the extra silicone. And because this wood was so thin, it broke in the mold. When we're using resin, it would be stronger than this. So hopefully we won't have this issue. Now we'll take out our only and we could use this to mold lots of pieces. This is how thick I made the mold but you could make it a little thinner for this piece because it's not that thick and you want to save on as much silicone as possible. Now we'll do the same for the bigger piece. We'll take off our cardboard and we'll cut around each and every piece of the wood just like we did for the smaller mold. For this bigger mold, it's easier to start from one side and cut all of the pieces and come down to the other side. This makes it easier and this seems to be the best way to do it so that we don't break the pieces. Thank you. 
Now that we cut out all the pieces, we have our molds that we could pour in our resin and have beautiful resin pieces. To make the pieces, I'm using this resin. I've been using it for a while now and I like it because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, just like the molds that we made before. All the materials I use in this project would be linked in the description down below. Now I'm using the silicone cup. Because of all the resin that I'm thinking about doing, I bought the silicone cup and the silicone spatula. You don't have to use silicone cups to do yours. You could cut off a Pepsi bottle and you could use that or anything that you have around the house. I'm using the markings on the cup so that I know how much to pour. I'm going to be pouring half of the resin and half of the hardener and mixing them together. And just like the silicone, we want to make sure and thoroughly mix it together. When you're mixing it, it would have this white cast and then you know you have to continue mixing it. You'll continue mixing it until it becomes completely clear. You wouldn't see any white streaks or anything like that. So just keep on mixing it until it's clear. Now we'll take our time and pour the silicone in the mold and fill up all the spaces. We'll also fill the small mold as well, just to see how it comes out. I had some extra silicone, so I poured it into this mold. This cup was able to fill all three molds. If there's any bubbles, you could use some heat to get rid of the bubbles. I think you could use a hairdryer, but you could also use one of those long lighters. That works really nice. Just make sure that you do a quick pass over it. Now we leave it to set and then we'll come back. I poured a few more. If you want flexibility, it's best to demold them when it's a little sticky to the touch so that you have the capability to bend them and mold them exactly the way you want. To take out our resin piece before it is fully dried, all we'll do is pull the sides of the mold to release the resin. Then we could take it out of our mold. One of the reasons I like using the resin instead of the wood is that you could bend it around any simple object and turn it into something wonderful. You could shape it and just mold it the way that you like. And that is a really, really big advantage to using the resin instead of the wood. And it's cost effective as well. So these have so much possibilities and I'm so excited to show you guys all the things that I'll be using them for coming up in the future. You could change your mind and straighten it out if you don't like what you did. When you take out your pieces, if there's any way that you over poured and there's some resin that you don't want stuck to your pieces, you could take an X-Acto knife and just cut out the extra pieces. Then we could curve this trim. If we created a chair and we have the staples showing, we could use this to trim around the edges to cover up the staples or anything that we want to do. So you guys would see all of that coming up in the future. And if we want to join the trims, it is so easy to do. Once it is still tacky, all you have to do is push the two pieces together. And just like that, they are welded together and you could pick it up and hold it and move it around and it is one piece. Then if you want to take it apart, all you have to do is pull it apart and it's apart again. This is so wonderful guys. I'm like a kid in a candy store. I can't wait to use all these wonderful things. And I can't wait for you guys to use them as well and show me what wonderful things you created using this idea. These are just some more of the pieces that I did. These two wrong ones is exactly the same. All I did with this one, I placed it over a balloon and wait until it got hard. And once it's hard, it would retain the shape. Now I could go on and on playing with these things and showing you guys these for hours. But I'll stop here for now. I am really excited to show you guys what I'm going to be doing with these onlays. So if you're new here and you're not yet subscribed, then go ahead and click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I upload a new video if you like videos like this. And if you guys have any suggestion of what I could be making with these onlays, then let me know in the comment section down below. And if you guys have any idea on what you could be doing with these onlays, I'd also like to know that in the comment section. You know, I love hearing from you guys. So thanks for taking the time out to watch this video. You have a blessed and awesome day. Now, if you like this video, you may also like these as well. See you in the next one.